what am I doing? Like, what is hookah culture? Welcome to Food Force Living. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to be talking about hugel culture. A lot of you on my uh, Instagram have been asking what am I doing? Like, what is hugel culture? And so today I'm just going to be talking about a little bit why we've chosen to do that method of gardening and what it's all about. love the concept of hill culture. Hugo culture is all about using what you already have around you. Any gardening system that relies heavily on imported fertility is not sustainable. Hugo culture is a regenerative way to have endless self-made fertility in the garden. No need for stores. Let me give you some other reasons why we're choosing to try hugo culture. We have excessive material at our fingertips, and instead of bagging it up as waste, let's put these valuable resources to use so that we can skip the store, build no-dig raised beds that hold moisture, give you long-term fertility, and maximize the surface area for your gardening. Hey friends, now that you know the benefits, let's talk about how they actually work. Gradual decay of the wood provides you consistent long-term nutrition. <laughs> Lucky for us, we have hard wood. This can put off 20 or more years of nutrition for the garden bed. These hugel beds have the capability in your design to actually increase your growing season. How that works is because as they are composting, they generate heat. In terms of increased surface area, just imagine the hugel bed is going to be shaped like a mound like this. And so you're going to have all the space on the side as well as the top and the other side to plant more plants. I did mention that your hugel beds will hold moisture. However, for your first year, you might want to consider watering your hugel bed. We just need to aid and give it a little boost in the first year to get going. But wait until next year. Next year will be minimal maintenance. The decay and the breakdown are going to provide their own aeration and they will act like the sponge that we're looking for. This is when the logs are going to store water during the rainfall and provide you with the moisture during your drought. If you do live in a drought prone climate, do consider the biomass of your hugel bed. The bigger mass that you make your hugel bed, the more there will be to sponge in and hold more water. In the most severe droughts, you might want to consider aiding your hugel bed depending on the size that you've made it and the logs that you know to be in the ground. Okay friends, let me now walk you through how we'll be designing our hugel beds over in our valley. And here is the valley. To make the base of our hugel beds here, we'll be digging a one foot trench in the clay of the valley. And here are the logs we'll use to fill the one foot trench. This hardwood is going to be used on the bottom because it'll take the longest to break down. On top of your first layer of logs, you're going to want to put down some green. That could be manure, it could be grass clippings, or it could be kitchen scraps. These greens are gonna give your logs the nitrogen that they need to begin decomposing so that you can get that moisture sponge effect. And now we're gonna find some softer, a little bit smaller, but still large logs so that we can begin creating a lasagna. And on top of those soft logs will be more green. Then we're gonna find some brush, thinner log brush that will decompose quicker than the bottom will. And on top of all that brush, we're gonna need to fill in all the nooks and crannies. So to do that, we're gonna be using dead dry leaves and kitchen compost scraps. Our final layers are gonna include homemade compost that we're gonna be making with this hay and I'm going to make a video on that. 
So stay tuned for the composting tutorial on how you can get usable compost in just a couple weeks. Once we've made our compost, we're going to be doing our own homemade soil by making our own potash and also mixing it with this topsoil dirt of a mixture of sand, silt and clay. So then we're going to be topping the hookah culture with last but not least fresh homemade soil. Okay, maybe I lied. One more thing. I want to plant clover. Clover should be atop your hookah bed or something such as straw or hay should be on top of your precious soil. You want to protect all the microbes in your soil from the sun. One more plant that I do have on the way that I plan on putting on top of my hugel beds is comfrey. And that's because it's a plant that gives a lot more than it takes. And I will be making a video about that in the future. Now that our hugel beds are practically made, we're just gonna let them sit for a year and let those nitrogen fixing plants feed the logs so that they can decompose and once they've gathered enough nitrogen that they need in order to start the decomposition process they will begin to give back everything that they once took and more. In this method of gardening we're going to be rewarded with endless organic rich soil. Please let me know in the comments below do you plan on making a hookah bed and where are you going to find your free material to use? I challenge you not to go to a store to get your material, but to use your local community to source free material. You can find out how our Hugel beds are going to perform by subscribing and staying tuned to our channel. I'll see you in the next video.